Hi, my name is Amanda Blondo with Northern Initiatives, and I'm the Business Advancement Center Director here. Um, and what that really means is I manage the training and consulting, or what we call technical assistance, with our borrowers. And the focus for my presentation today is really going to be about expanding economic literacy through the use of the Money Smart for Small Business curriculum that was developed by the FDIC. But first, I kind of want to give you a context of who Northern Initiatives is, um, and what we do and why this was something that we wanted to tackle. So we've been providing loans to startup and existing businesses for over 20 years. Um, and we serve 51 counties, which is northern Michigan, and the northeastern counties in Wisconsin, too. So it's a very rural territory um, and very large, spread out over 37,000 square miles. We are also a CDFI, which means a Community Development Financial Institution. Um, and there's 800 of us throughout the nation. And it's charter, we're really chartered to lend money to small businesses and community projects that improve these communities. So it's very mission focused, the work that we do. And it's serving those that aren't typically served through banks, um, through other traditional financing. Um, so we're able to help those that a lot of times banks might not help a startup where we're going to be able to help those two. And we're really working on making, helping businesses and communities to prosper. So what businesses do with their loans? So it's all about um, small business lending. There's no actual um, residential lending or anything that we do, but we do help people buy real estate. We provide them with advice and consulting. They can do process improvement, working capital so that they can support growth or start, equipment purchases, building expansions, and rehabilitation. So basically any type of function um, or equipment or building that you need for a business, we're able to support businesses with that. A few impacts to let you know about the breadth of our work is we've done over 700 loans, and that's for over 42 million. We've also created 400 jobs and 1,200 jobs retained, and that's really just in the last four years. If we go back further, it's closer to 3,000 jobs created and retained. The other thing that we do is we really partner with banks to, to be able to provide funding. So um, we've been able to leverage over 39 million in loans as well. So that means that we're able to provide that much more impact to businesses and to the communities. So with these loans, they typically range, we've got small business loans, which are typically 50,000 to 500,000. So they're larger loans. Um, and then we also have a microloan program, which is 50,000 or below. And with the microloan program, we're able to provide technical assistance. So that means we can help them set up their QuickBooks, their financials, help them with website development, marketing, and e-commerce assistance, which really makes um, us unique. So it's not just being able to provide them with the capital, but it's also helping to provide them with the tools, and the systems, and the training to be able to be successful in the business that they are launching and growing. So with the Business Advancement Center, that really is our focus area. So we've got a de dedicated team that helps these businesses on these areas. And two areas are really what we focus on, and it really is the financial education, so really understanding the financials of their business um, so that they don't run out of cash, they know how to make decisions based on the financials that they're seeing, um, and it really is kind of the key driver for a business. And then we also help them then, once they've got that understanding on how they increase their sales, their marketing, um, and the next stage. We are also the... Upper Peninsula Michigan Manufacturer, Manufacturing Technology Center um, for the region too. So we work with more of the stage two businesses in that um, and we're able to work with a whole network of suppliers um, and coaches. But we don't do it alone um, and we really see the value of working with partners. So we've got a group of NMU students, and Northern Initiatives actually was started as a department of Northern Michigan University here in Marquette, Michigan, um, and later spun off into a private nonprofit corporation. But we still really hold those ties with the university because we think it's very important. So the students really help to support this key business advancement work that we do. and. Um, 
so around market research, social media, website design, financial analysis. Those are really the key areas that we bring them in. And we employ seven to nine students at a time. Um, and then we also work with local experts and practitioners. So that's providing QuickBooks training, business plan development, marketing research, general business coaching. What we try to do is fill in some of those gaps. So that's why we've always worked with partners. So if there's already those services out there, we want to make sure that we can leverage those services, that we're just helping to fill in some of the gaps where they might not be getting training uh, currently. Most of the work that we do is a one-on-one -on -one or individual based. So with our vast region, um, it can take six hours to drive to our, to our southernmost part of the territory three hours to the western part and three hours to the eastern part really based it out of Marquette. So it's a very large territory um, with not a lot of groupings of population. Um, so that's why we've done a lot of it individual based and we've actually started to use distance technology for a while using things as webinars or go to meetings primarily actually on an individual coaching base um, just because of we're not able to do the car time. Um, so it started to get us to think about what other ways can we scale our technical, technical assistance? So there's some really exciting things happening at Northern Initiatives. We have had gotten a grant uh, from the WK Kellogg Foundation to help us grow our lending capacity. So we've been able to double our lending capacity and we're now set up to be able to reach 100 loans per year where we have a current loan portfolio of 160. So that's a huge growth that can be happening over the next few years. And we've, we've got the systems in place for that, but then the challenge really is how do we scale our technical assistance for our borrowers and those skills that we feel are so important for them to know to be successful to match that loan growth. And then also keeping in mind, it's very rural and it's an isolated ge geographic territory. So we, the, that makes some unique challenges. We, it's hard to do workshops because everybody's spread out. Um, so we just really needed to think about that. And then think about advancing economic literacy. The, S, the Small Business Administration states that 50% of businesses survive five years or more, while only a third survive 10 years or more. And one of the key things that we think um, can help make that difference is providing them with the tools that they need. One of the main reasons that businesses actually fail is due to lack of cash. And if they can understand what leads to those scenarios where they might have a lack of cash, then they're more likely to be able to see them early on, to be able to manage those, and to be more successful in their business. So while we kind of step back and thought about We've got this great opportunity to grow. How do we scale technical assistance? We weren't able to throw more staff at it, more hours. You know, we've already kind of hit our capacity, and we wanted to be able to provide assistance to all of our borrowers at some level because we think it's very crucial instead of just those at the, t at the current time that were just for the microloan borrowers. So it's only a very small set of our sub-borrowers. So we came up with a new approach. And the, the Money Smart for Small Business is a very um, big key to getting this started. So this new approach we're going to have is we're really looking to how do we standardize the way to increase technical assistance. So as, as I mentioned, we have 160 in our portfolio today. And we're going to be doing 100 loans a year, maybe as early as this year, and if not this year, next year. Um, so we're really looking to scale that very fast. We want to be able to provide some of those basic training elements to businesses so that they're more likely to be successful. We want them to beat that 50% past five years and the third being successful past 10 years. So we wanted to provide them with some of that basic knowledge that they need and be able to provide it to everybody, not just based on those that might have grant funding associated or have certain demographic information associated with them where we can get that grant funding. So we want to make sure everybody has an opportunity. So the first step really is conducting an assessment. So we've created an assessment. It's 
there's two different ones. One is a startup one and another is an existing business assessment. And the purpose of the assessment is to really understand the proficiencies and knowledge gaps for the business so that we can create a training plan. This isn't going to be used to understand if they're, if they're applicable for financing. We want this to just be focused on training. And from that information that we receive and what the goals that they actually identify through the assessment, we'll create a training plan. So this training plan um, is going to be developed and it's going to be somewhat of a tiered approach. So those that are newer in business or just learning some of those basic skills, they're going to go through a video library. And as we see that they're committed to, to learning and they're committed to um, growing their community and growing their business and they want to create jobs, then they're going to get more individualized coaching. So it's a way for us to still provide those high level of services and be able to provide everybody with some type of training. The base of that training really is going to be this Money Smart for Small Business curriculum developed by the FDIC. So the videos are going, there's going to be, they're typically 50 to 20 minutes 20 minute videos that go through topics such as insurance, task, risk management, and I'm going to get into that a little bit more in depth. And then it's coupled with a quiz to understand what they learned, what they're going to implement in their business, and what other areas would they like to explore more. Once they complete a training plan, we'll do the assessment again so then we can understand are these trainings really making an impact? Is it helping those businesses to, to grow their knowledge and to be able to implement systems into their business so that they can grow and they can expand? So I'm going to go through just a little bit. And, and the reason why I'm going through this is because it, it really is part of this bigger movement. Most of the time, we'll be focused on the Money Smart for Small Business curriculum. But it is really part of a bigger picture that I think it's very important that I talk about and do a highlight on that as well. So we start with our training assessment. And we've really broken it down into three high-level areas, managing their business, managing their money, and marketing their business. And each of these questions are then tied to a recommended training video or other recommended trainings that they should go through. We've actually used a scale because one of the important things and one of the goals for the trainings that we provide at Northern Initiatives is we're wanting them to help build systems. So it's not just about having a general knowledge about what insurance is or what organizational structures. We want them to actually be able to then use that information and make decisions into their business. So the scale that we use, and you can see on here that some of these say that they're scale types of questions. We actually use the scale yes and satisfied. So that means yes, I use this in my business and I'm satisfied. I, I have the knowledge level um, that I feel comfortable with this and I don't feel like I need to learn more at this time. Yes, it needs improvement, so I am, this is a system that I have added into my business, but you know, I could use a little bit more training as well. No, but want, want to or plan to. So they haven't added the system, but they are interested in it. No, do not plan or want to, so then it lets us know that, you know, they don't have this in their system they don't have this as part of their business right now, and really they're not that interested. So we don't want to be spending a lot of time trying to provide training around an area that they just say they have no interest in. And then not sure at this time. So that tells us that there might be a little bit of education that we can do, but that they're not also all that interested and engaged yet. So the purpose of this really is for us to know where do we put our efforts. So I want to know where are the efforts that they really have identified that they do want to use in their business and that they do have a gap in. So it, so it is a self-assessment um, and they're already kind of signing on to that type of training by, by selecting those options. So the assessment takes 15 to 20 minutes to go through um, and the startup and the existing are, are a bit different. The existing gets a little bit more into strategy and human resources where the startup is really focused on some of those key 
offerings and systems that they should have before they start their business and that they should be thinking about. And we've actually piloted, started piloting this, and the initial feedback that we've gotten from people is, this is kind of a this is a great checklist. I wish I had this when I started my business. Oh, there's some areas that I hadn't thought of before. So it's really helping people to think about certain systems. And that's one of the things we wanted to do because a lot of times you don't know what you don't know. Um, so us being able to put this on the assessment, people are then able to think about it for their business, think about if it relates and if it is something that they're interested in learning more about. And by us having now a standardized way to ask this, then we're getting all the same information from every business. Where before, if you've got a coach that's more focused on financials, they're going to think more on the asking about the financials. If you've got somebody who's more on sales, they're going to ask more about what's your sales numbers, what's your sales strategy, and we were missing kind of a key component. So this is going to allow us to have a standardized way to assess it and then drive them to those FDIC Money Smart training modules that are important for their business. This is then coupled into an online learning portal. So this is all going to be combined into one. So once they complete the business assessment, we actually create these training goals. So they can track progress to their training goals and see what else they need to complete. They can access the training sessions or the, the training videos. So as we launch this, it really is going to be the 10 FDIC Money Smart for Small Business curriculum videos that are going to be in this area. And you can see there's text planning and reporting, financial management. So it will all, this dashboard that they log into is going to be customized to what their training goals are, their preferences in their industry, everything that they set before. We'll have interactive business tools uh, that will actually have videos incorporated, incorporated with them too so they understand how do they use these tools to calculate their break even, understand markup versus margin, be able to actually plan their sales by product or service to reach those break even sales um, or their other their profit goals that they've set for their business. So those will be interactive tools and videos that will walk them through. Recommended articles based on their preferences and are related to those training videos. And the forums will be an area where they can connect with peers, they can connect with coaches and get more information. Um, so it's not just the videos, this is all coupled to be able to enhance their training. And then messages where they can connect directly with a coach and they can also re receive updates on new materials added to the portal um, or other updates. So that's just an overview of where we're going. So this, the FDIC Money Smart for Small Business Curriculum, it's a part of a very big initiative that we're trying to roll out, but the FDIC Money Smart really is the basis of the training that's going to be in this first phase of the rollout for the portal, um, which we're planning to do in Q4 of 2014. So there's 10 modules in the FDIC Money Smart. So we've got insurance, tax planning, selling and succession planning, financial management, banking services, risk management, credit reporting, organizational types, time management, and record keeping. All of these areas um, are, are important to business. And, and a lot of times I think they might be known as kind of the unfun areas, but they're crucial. And a lot of times people just think, oh, my accountant will take care of it, or um, it's, not, it's something I don't need to worry about. Um, but it really is key. And it, is important. So with banking services, for example, if, if they don't understand the types of um, credits, of, you know, lines of credits they can get or different types of financing, they could be using a credit, credit card to finance something where they could be saving a lot more money. Um, so by having this education, they're really ha help able to create systems for their business. Um, and be able to expand upon that. So with the insurance one, it really goes through all the, the, the basic levels of insurance you need. So it's made to make people really think about what type of insurance do I need for my business? If I'm a home-based business, do I also need additional property insurance? Do I need other kind of product insurance? So what do I need to make sure that I'm covered? 
And the video also goes through weighing the potential costs of insurance with the cost of the risk. So if you were to have an injury on your property, what would the cost be to your business and is it worth the deductible or the policy that you need to pay? So it goes through all those basic policies for insurance. Tax planning is another area where we see a lot of businesses get into challenges with their finances. So they start, they don't plan ahead, they're not doing proactive tax planning. So next thing you know, you're behind on your taxes and it's a, it's a tough thing to catch up with. So this helps people to understand what are the typical taxes needed for a business and it also advises them to you know, connect with an expert and knowing the right questions to ask and to be tracking every quarter, every year. Goes through the keys of selling and succession planning. A lot of times businesses will they'll open and they'll say, you know, I'm trying to build this business to hand down to my my family, to my kids when, when they get older. Um, but in reality, it's really much different. Only about 30% of family-owned businesses survive into the second generation. Well, 12% are still viable into the third generation, and only 3% operate into their fourth generation and beyond. Um, so we really want to help people understand early. Think about building value in your business. A lot of times I say, as I'm starting, I don't need to really think about that, but it is. It's from the beginning, what do you want this to be? You want to be able to create a viable business so that later you can sell it, you can hand it down, or be able to make that decision that, you know what, now is the right time to close. Um, so this helps provide the tools to small businesses so that they can understand how to really make that plan and evaluate the value of their business. Financial management, I think, is kind of our key area in everything that we focus on when we first work with a business. Trying to make sure that they get their balance sheet accurate and their income statement accurate. A lot of businesses really just focus on their income statement. What are their sales? What is their profit? But then they don't look at the balance sheet. They don't understand how does that, that then relate to the cash, to the net wet, net equity, if they ever do want to sell this business, they want to get a loan because that's what the banker looks at. So with the financial management, you go through both of those. And it's just a high level because it's a 15 to 20 minute video, but it's still a high level of looking at your profit and loss or income statement and your balance sheet and understanding how do those relate together, what are they saying about my business, and what decisions should I be making based on those. The next set of five videos is um, risk management, credit reporting, organizational types and considerations, time management, and record keeping. Risk management kind of pulls everything together. It's thinking about your financials, your taxes, insurance, and this video actually goes through and helps you create a checklist. So the businesses can create a checklist and helps them understand what they, sh what they should be looking at monthly, quarterly, annually. Um, so then they just have this nice cheat sheet or checklist right in front of them so they know what they should be looking at for their businesses so that they can reduce risk and be able to continue to operate their business. The focus on the credit reporting is really on understanding the credit report how to read it, how to make decisions, and, and understanding how that plays a role and then getting financing. So if they're wanting to start a business, they're wanting to grow a business, they're now able to understand what are bankers looking at, how does this really affect me, and how important is this, because it is one of the most crucial parts of getting additional financing and capital to fund their business. Organizational types and and considerations. This seems, sometimes when you look at this training you might think, oh, I know I'm just sole prop or I'm not going to have to change this um, for a while. I'm fine. And they don't really understand the implications. So with this video we actually go through and compare each of the different types of organization, organizations and look at what are the tax implications, what are the things you need to consider for liability, and compare those side by side. I actually worked with a small business who said, once I changed my organizational type, I saved thousands of dollars a year in taxes, and they had no clue. 
So this video helps businesses to understand when should they be thinking about shifting, asking themselves critical questions about which organizational type is right for them, and then if they don't know, then they can ask an expert and get more information. Time management seems like one of those topics that, you know, we all know, but I think we all also go, there's not enough time, and small business owners especially, you know, they're not working 40 hours a week, they're working 70 plus hours a week, so being able to manage time efficiently and really spend time on the right tasks is what's important. So this training will go through and focus on time management and making sure that what you're doing is, is getting you towards your goals. So making a plan, a daily, weekly, monthly, an annual plan that gets you to those goals for your business. And lastly, record keeping. Record keeping is very important for business, um, especially as they continue to grow. So developing these systems to understand what products people are buying, who your customers are, what their trends are, um, looking at contracts, all of those are very important for running a successful long-term business and being able to later delegate to businesses as well. So the Money Smart curriculum, we, so we connected with the FDIC and we actually set up an agreement with them so that we were able to deliver these workshops or trainings. So they were set up as a one to two hour workshop. You get an instructor guide, presentation visuals, so a PowerPoint and PDF, and a participant guide. Very nicely laid out. It's got the full script in there for the instructor guide, um, a lot of a lot of information. I would say it's a complete packages. It even tells you, you know, how long everything should take and when to take breaks and, and the visuals. So it helps you guide through the process. The challenge for us is that we didn't want to deliver it in a workshop format. So we connected with the FDIC and the person who was really working on getting this out to the communities for having banks and other CDFIs to deliver this and said, you know, we're thinking we may want to make this into an online learning session, training. These are our challenges. We are rural, we have a very large territory, and we need to scale our technical assistance, and we think that this content can be delivered in a virtual manner. And they, we asked them if other people were already doing this because we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. If somebody else was already working on this, we didn't want to redo it. Um, and they said at this point people had talked about it, but nobody had actually said they have started it um, and, and were on board. So we had the permission to be able to use their basic content to be able to create these videos, which is very important, especially if you're getting a base curriculum to be able to get that permission, you want to know exactly what you can or can't do with it. So we've revised these videos to be 15 to 20 minutes. So it's a, from one to two hour workshops now to 15 to 20 minute online videos. We've also changed the format. So for each of the videos, a small business owner introduces the topic. They talk about why that topic is important to their business. So then the business owners are able to connect directly with a peer. It makes it much more relevant. Then an NI representative sets the objectives for the training. Then we go into the bulk of the content, which is really the key lessons in the training. So it's a very visual, um, looks a lot like PowerPoint, uh, and I have some screenshots of that later on too. And we have a narrator that actually goes through the training. The content wraps up with another small business owner sharing their perspective. So we've got a small business owner at the beginning and at the end sharing their stories. And lastly, NI representative wraps up the video with our tagline. So it keeps the branding, it keeps the messaging consistent throughout all the videos. So each of the videos had a script. So it was a roadmap for the project. So on the left-hand side, we'd outline what was going to be shown on the video or the overview for the video. And on the right-hand side, we, it's the exact audio that the narrator used to record. So this was, 
as I'm talking about kind of lesson learned, what was great is we received this detailed script from the, the FDIC, um, but as we started to go through and had to cut things, it was a lot of work on doing the scripts. It was almost a complete rewrite of a lot of the scripts. We used a lot of content, but there still was a lot of different writing, so that's something you know, as if you're going into a video project, you really want to be thinking about is what resources do we have for script development? Um, do we have the time and the funding? And just really allocating that time. We reviewed each of the scripts, so the 10 videos, three different times. Um, went through them completely. And one of the things, actually, that we learned is reading the scripts out loud. So as we read them, you know, quietly in our heads and we're reading, it's like, yes, this content's right, yep, that's what we want to cover. It didn't read the same as when we read it out loud and could really hear what the small businesses would be hearing as well. So that changed it too. So it just gives it a little bit of a different perspective. And then the other part too is with the video on the left-hand side, making sure that the bullets are right, that the timing is right. Um, so that you're able to, you're not having to go back and review. At this point, we've just gotten the first version of our videos, and we're going back and we're reviewing all of the text and how it lines up with the narration, so the visuals with the narration. Um, and it's taking around three to four hours per video to review for a 15 to 20 minute video. So it's just something to, to keep in mind that there's a, a time investment. So this is Dave Manson. He's one of our um, borrowers, and he's with Black Rocks Brewery in Marquette. So he, when we did these business introductions, we wanted to think about diversity of region, diversity of industry, diversity of um, time in business, too. So if they're more of a startup or they've been around for you know over 20 years or a multiple generation type of business. We really wanted to be able to give different voices because the businesses that we work with, they all they all have different, you know, they're all coming from different backgrounds. They all have different experience. We wanted them to be able to connect with somebody. So each of these start out with their perspectives. And we didn't say, we didn't coach them to say anything. What we did is we actually knew what their experiences were beforehand. We worked with a producer out of Lansing to actually do these videos and they interviewed each of these businesses to understand what topics could they talk to. So before we actually went and did the video shoots, we had a potential hit list for each of the 10 videos and who could talk to those points. Some of the topics were very general, um, tax planning, record keeping, credit reporting, that everybody has to deal with that. So then everybody still got asked those questions and we were able to pick the best interviews from those. While they were there, they also got B-roll. So now we have this great, it's not just the interview, but it's watching the businesses as they're working in their business. So these owners are in their business, we're able to see them, it makes it much more authentic and real, and it makes it much more likely that the small business owners can connect with this video. These intros are moving. Um, and it actually, I think, will shape how we do videos in the future where we really want it to be more the focus of hearing from the small business owners, hearing from experts, hearing from practitioners, um, because that really keeps people engaged and it feels much more authentic. So this is a picture of the Black Rocks canning facility. You can see the owner speaking with employees. This is Gina Thorson from Jackwort Fabric Products. So they are, they are a multi-generational -gener family business. Um, so she was really able to speak to the selling and succession planning and thinking about that because they've handed it down for multiple businesses and she's actually in the process of taking over some of the business activities while Bob Jackwort is still um, the president of the company. Um, but she was really able to talk from firsthand experience. So that's how we targeted, we thought about who has this experience, who would be able to give us the most authentic, because it comes directly from the small business owner's perspective and sharing their knowledge. 
Here's a picture of people sewing at Jackwort Fabric Products. And then this is Dan Torres from Border Grill, which is a restaurant in Marquette. Um, they actually have three locations, and they smart. We had worked with them when they got their first. They started their first location and had helped them expand. And now they've actually graduated to bank financing. And he was able to, able to talk about great stories about offering health insurance to his employees, thinking about risk management with the food industry. There's a lot of risks, so how do they manage it? What insurance do they have to make sure that they're in compliance and the different types of policies they, they put in place? So we were able to get just a very um, broad array of experiences and voices. And I think what it did is it really made the, bring these trainings to life. So they're not, they don't just seem academic. Um, they really made it bring them to life. And then we also have an NI representative to introduce each of the topics. That NI representative sets the stage, welcomes the person viewing the video to the training, and sets the objectives, Let them know what are we going to be talking about through this video, what should you be learning while you go through this video. And then actually um, wraps it up, letting people know, thanking them for being going through it and, and sharing our message. So this is what the training content actually looks like, the narrated part of it. Uh, and it's primarily text. We've got graphics and animation in there. Um, but this is the bulk of the training. So the, the introductions are around a minute long, a minute, minute, minute and a half from the businesses. The NI representative is less than 30 seconds. And then this is the bulk of the training. So this takes about 15 minutes to go through the training. And it depends um, by topic. The training videos are also supported with other resources. So each of the videos will have session notes. So it's a high level. This is what you should take away from this 15 to 20 minute training. They'll also be able to download the full script so that they can follow along. There'll be tools, links, and additional resources associated with it. So for example, with the credit reporting, we've got links to annual credit report where they can view, they can actually go in and pull their credit score. We've actually, we've also include links to resources that help them get more in-depth information and in learning about their credit score. They also connect with the forum with other peers and coaches, or they can ask a coach directly. So I've gotten through this training, this part wasn't clear, or now I have a question on this topic in the training. So they're able to, they're encouraged to reach out afterwards. And I think that's what, um, I think the training videos are so important on the topics that they have, but it's then trying to support them so that they can implement it. That's always our goal. It's not just knowledge cre creation, it's about implementation into their business. Because that's what's going to make the adjustment for their business. That's what's going to make them more successful. So this project um, has taken us about five months so far. So we started in February. We got the contract signed um, with our producer. And I would say that was probably one of the more stressful things when we were trying to think about how do we want, how do we get these to online videos? So we had all the materials, we had the scripts, but we needed to get this to an online format. And we thought we'd have to get a script writer, we'd have to get a, a video producer, we'd have to find narrators. Um, we thought that it was going to have to be all these different people that we'd then have to manage and try to get to work together, which we had no experience on. Finally, after a lot of asking around, somebody said, why don't you just get a producer? They will manage everything. Um, and that's what we did. So we've worked with such video out of Lansing, and they are our producer. So they've helped us with the script writing. They're doing all the visuals. They, got, they interviewed the narrators, gave us three potential options, and we could go back if we wanted more, but they, the ones that they picked were great. 
they did all the video shoots, came up and did those throughout the Upper Peninsula and Northern Lower Michigan. So they've managed the whole process. Then what we've done is we've provided the guidance. So we've recommended which business owners we thought that they should talk to and who they should interview to see if they're a fit for the videos. We've gone through and done a training. We did two full day sessions looking at each of the scripts to understand what were the key things we wanted to keep in since we were cutting them down from one to two days, I'm sorry, one to two hours to 15 to 20 minute scripts. So we went through each of those and then we did do a lot of different editing and revisions and feedback on those scripts and those graphics. So February through April, we um, did those script reviews, revisions, and finalization. So that did take, as I mentioned, I did that about three times for each script. Um, and I think going into this next time, um, we'd have a, we just have gained a lot of knowledge through it. We know now what we need to be list, looking at. We know that we need to be reading these out loud, really thinking about how it from the business perspective from the beginning because if you can eliminate one revision, it's going to save a lot of time. I think the script revisions probably took an hour or two at a minimum each time we went through it. And then when you're looking at the scripts, you also want to be looking at the video content that's going to go with it. So as we were making revisions to the scripts, we were sometimes cutting things and not also cutting that out from the video portion. So that's just something to always making sure those two match up side by side, the timing matches up, and it says exactly what you want it to do. It's going to save a lot of work in the long run if that's done from the beginning. So then in April, we actually recorded the interviews with the businesses and the NI representatives. That was done over a three to four day period um, and, and went very smoothly. They actually did all the recordings um, and we just needed to be there for the video, the NI representative video introductions. Everything else they were able to handle and um, we didn't have to be on site for that. Another area is we got the sponsors secured in May. Um, and this is it important to get these secured as early as possible, basically for the graphic piece of it. Um, at the beginning of the videos, if there's a sponsorship, we write that in there. We say that the video was partially or fully underwritten by the sponsor. So the earlier you get those, the earlier, um, the easier it is for getting those into the visuals of the, the video. And then we also in May recorded the narration and started developing the graphics. That actually was the quick, quick part of it. The, the part that took the longest really was the script development, and now we're reviewing the videos. So we're going through each, each of the videos. They're now, we have version one, so it does show the business introduction, the NI representative, the initial graphics, the narration has all been recorded. Um, so it's all a complete package now. Um, and what we're having to go through is just make sure that the text that shows up really in that key training portion is matches with the audio, it's showing the right things, making sure that there's not enough white space or too much time in between audio. So it's a timing thing, um, which does take about three hours to review each video um, and go through that. And that actually is being finalized right now, and we'll have round two of these videos in July, and we'll be um, piloting those starting mid-July and through August to get feedback from businesses before we get those to the final view. And then September, we're promoting and launching the training series to all of our borrowers. So after Labor Day, we'll be holding a series of webinars to let people know about the training series, about the portal, about the assessment in this new way of working with Northern Initiatives. I've mentioned these as I've gone through the training, but I did want to call it out. Some of our lessons learned um, and really wanted to share with others um, what to be thinking about if you want to be developing online videos. The big thing is eh, making sure you have the time and the resources. It is an, 
a commitment on the organization's side. Um, if you're looking for financing, it's not just to finance the videos for the external consultant, it's also the staff members um, because there is oversight. Even if you have a producer doing all of it, there's still a lot of oversight um, in the project. If there's less script development, then it's going to be a little bit less time, but no matter what, there's still going to be project management time. Script reviewing and editing, that was, again, that was our major area that took us, and that did take us, um, you know, three months to complete that, as you saw on the timeline. Um, so just know, think about those topics that I mentioned before. Read it, you know, read it out loud. Think about it from the business perspective. Think about that right from the beginning so that you can reduce your revisions. And this is important. Be clear on expectations. So this is important with anybody you work with. You want to understand exactly what they need from you and what exactly they're going to do. In the end, you also want to know who owns everything. So when we did the video production, we wanted to make sure that we could get the raw video so that we're able to reuse that video later on to be able to produce commercials, produce other short videos as well. Um, so that's always any type of contract you have. Be very clear about that. Get it written in stone. And also avoid any time or cost overruns too. If It's very clear about who's doing what. And with the sponsorships, try to get those as early as possible. And with them too, set clear expectations. What are they allowed to have feedback on? How much say do they have in the production? Um, if you set that clearly up front, then it makes it much easier in the long run. Um, and otherwise, there can be additional changes that can add cost, can maybe um, make changes to the videos that you didn't want as well. So it's something that you just want to consider. So where are we going next? Um, as I'm giving this webinar, we're right in the middle of things, or I feel like we're in the middle, we're almost done, um, but we still want to, we need to finalize and pilot these videos. So we're on to version two of the videos, we've given the feedback on version one, and we're going to start piloting mid-July. And this is where we're really going to find out from the small business owners how the trainings are working for them. Is it, are they getting the information they need? How is the narration, the text that's in there? We really have to do that test before we launch it to everybody else. So we're going to be gathering that feedback um, on content and effect on the business. So as they go through the videos and they complete those, they're actually going to go through an evaluation. And the evaluation want, is going to ask them a few things. So they want, we want them to re rate the quality of the training see if the training sufficiently increased their knowledge level of the topic, if the ability to learn and apply the content will help them to run their business, areas they want to explore in more detail, and one change they plan to implement based on the training. So based on that feedback, we'll make changes to that training and then future trainings that we work on developing. Another part that we're working on developing is an incentive program or reward program. So it, for the business owners, their time is so crunch, so what's in it for them? So that's what we're working on, an incentive program for those that go through that training plan that they do get a, a reward, whether it's a rate reduction, um, whether it's a cash bonus, that's something that we're going to be working on developing. We'll be launching this platform and videos in Q4 2004, by Q4 2014, so in September, as I mentioned. That will be the initial rollout. And we're also planning for a next round of videos. So we know that this is a great start for us. It's a good base of videos, but we want to add some more. And the next areas we're really focusing on are sales and marketing, connecting those with the business tools so they know what their break-even is, how do I now use that to make my sales and marketing plans, and then also really getting in depth on cash flow. Since that's the number one reason businesses fail, we want to make sure that we tackle that head on and try to work with that issue early. And then lastly, we want to measure success of the business. We really want to look at that SBA mortality rate. So 50% of businesses um, are still operating in five years or a third in 10 years. So we want to measure 
our businesses to that as well and see what the training effects are, if any. So that's my high level overview of what we're doing with the FDIC for Money Smart. Um, and it really is a, a huge strategic shift for Northern Initiatives and where we're going. And thank you for listening. Good job, Amanda. That was that was really well done. Um, I actually I do have some questions. The okay. online learning portal—that's what it's mm -hmm. called, right? Um, yeah. Can I ask you? Did you have that before you did these videos? And is this something that you've used for for other purposes, or did you have someone actually design that for you? Um, and would other communities need to do that? I mean, does that take a long time to get that developed before you even? Something like this? You know, we we started developing things in conjunct them in conjunction. So we knew we wanted this approach, um, and they did start in conjunction. The videos actually are going to be saved on Vimeo. Okay. So anybody could use that. We we got the pro account, which is around two hundred dollars uh, per year. So that's really a, the investment that's needed for housing. Um, but the portal we thought was important because we wanted to provide all these resources around the videos. Right. Okay. So I, I guess my prosperity plan, the dashboard, is that, um, that I guess that's more of what I was thinking about. Is, was that something that you had previous to the development of these videos? No. No. Okay. That's Yep, that's getting launched at the same time as the videos. Oh, okay. And um, so that would seem like that would take a significant amount of time and energy too, or was it pretty easy to, to develop it? And, and I'm kind of curious, like, how does the back end work? Is it, because somebody's got to monitor that, right? Yes. Yeah. So. It is, it's, it's been a lot of work. I mean, it's been both things. Um, simultaneously that we've been working on, um, which makes it more challenging. What's going to happen right now is um, they're going to do the business assessment. We actually are working on the algorithms right now to create the training plan. Okay. And then eventually what that will do is automatically build their prosperity plan or that training plan you saw in the portal. Right. Okay. So that's going to be standardized and automated so that they go in there. Okay. Yeah, because it, it seems like a lot of, um, you see a lot of these kinds of platforms that look similar, like dashboards where you can put a profile and you can, you know, monitor your your success and, and kind of measure your success. I just have noticed that volunteer sites are now, I don't know if you've heard of GiveGab. Mm -mm. It's, it's where they, where you can go and create your own profile, you can, put in the organizations that you like to volunteer for, and then you monitor your hours and what you've done there. And then from the back end of it, organizations can then look at what's going on with their volunteer people. And they can say, mm -hmm. they can report back and say, we've had so many volunteers you know, this year, this is the number of hours, and this is what they actually volunteered on. So it's like a measure of success. But I'm just using that as an example, because it seems like this is something that a lot of communities should consider having for, for a lot of different purposes, I guess. And I know it doesn't go along with the videos. It does go along with the videos, but I mean, I think that it's a whole other piece that has to be developed, like you said, in conjunction or, or simultaneously, right? Right. Yep. Okay. And it has a username and password and all that, or? Yep. So whenever they, um, we close a loan, they'll get a username and password. Okay. All right. Um, yep. And, and actually, one of the interesting things with it, too, is it integrates with Salesforce. So we use that for all of our customer relationship management. Uh, so the assessment um, connects with Salesforce. Any of those evaluations or quizzes that they're doing, those connect with Salesforce. So we're going to be able to see it in the back end of the portal. Yeah. But then we're also going to be able to pull reports out of Salesforce. And we also do put um, business financials in there, okay. so the high-level information. Um, and we actually pull in loan performance information. So okay. the goal is, in the end, that we're going to be able to match up all this information and yeah. be able to tell a story. Right, right. That's kind of where I was going in my head, thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is very cool. 
Um, and, and the business assessment, I was just you know looking at some of the questions that you had. Um, I think you guys have really put a lot of thought in this. I mean, it seems like a great way to kind of narrow down where where they need help. Where, where and they need, like you said, also you don't know what you don't know. You know, and right. it's a good way of, of looking at you know each one of them. So would you be able to? Let's just say I go to the computer and I'm I type into a Google search. Um, business support, or business training, or financial planning, or business financial planning, whatever I type in there, would it pop up that I would see not just Northern Initiative's website, but would I see the um, something that would let me know about this whole prosperity plan and the videos and all that? Is it going to be like its own separate thing that you can find, or is it? Are you going to have to go through your website to get to? learn about this? You know, it's going to have its own like subdomain. Okay. And then it will also be a link from our website too. Um, and then what it will do is for those that aren't members, it'll just give a little overview of what, you know, My Prosperity Plan is. And that's actually the name that we're using now. Yeah. Um, it's My Prosperity Plan. So it gives an overview of the purpose of that. Okay. Good. Because not everybody knows about Northern Initiatives, right? So. I'm right. assuming not everybody knows, maybe everybody does know about you guys. No. Um, <laughs> so Would that be nice? Yeah, there's so much noise out there that you just, like, keyword searches in Google will hopefully bring them to you and, you know, they'll learn about that this is available to them. Um, my husband and I, we own a business, and we owned a business in the past, too, and we have, we've had two, and I just... I completely, when you're saying they don't have time, you know, well, they do have time, but they just, they have to prioritize, and mm -hmm. it has to be worth it to them to really feel like they're going to come out on the other end and know a lot more, and it'll help their business, and they'll make more money, that's the whole point. Um, right. So the script development, you said, was probably the, that's the lengthiest process of most of the pieces of this? Yes. Yeah, okay. It was a lot of work, um, and I think what's hard is, you know, we did 10 at a time mm -hmm. because, you know, it's scales of economy, and then, but the issue is, is you would review all 10, you would learn something new, so then you got to review all 10 again, learn something new, <laughs> oh, my God. instead of if you were learning, you know, if you were reviewing three, learn something and then gone through it. So, and I guess I didn't even think about that, but like staggering it a little bit more probably would be helpful yeah. that maybe it's that you give, you know, you do the round one of revisions on three videos and then let's go to the next one. So you were asking for input and that was making the revisions happen, right? Well, they were asked. So basically what's happened is we had gotten the scripts from the FDIC, but they were, you know, they were much longer, so we needed to cut it back. So we did a two-day training with such video and talked about, you know, what do we want to keep in? What are our key points? What are maybe some things that we can cut because we knew we had to? Mm -hmm. So we went through that, and based on that meeting, they went through and they did some revisions. Okay. Then we had to read through it again and you know make some more revisions and sometimes we did comments sometimes we did revisions you know there was multiple multiple people making revisions to it mm -hmm. so i think later we really understand what they wanted is us to just make changes we could use track changes and do it yeah and when you say it's such video s u c h mhm mm okay never heard of them i mean and maybe they're are they kind of just now emerging of the a new company or they've been around They've been around for a while. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they're in Lansing. Yeah. And I've only been in Lansing for a couple of years now, but and we're just starting to kind of pop on the whole video thing. It's taken us a while, but um, you're going to see some videos on some of the other coloring plans. But for years, it didn't make sense. We're like, why are we doing a video of video? So we thought, no, <laughs> let Amanda do her thing, and she'll have all kinds of great videos. Um, but the series of webinars that you're talking about to get the word out, that's a good idea, too. You know, this, these kinds of podcast things. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking then we can walk them through so then they understand how do you use the My Prosperity Plan. Yeah. 
Yeah. How you get through that, so it introduces them to it. Yeah. Okay, so two videos in July, that's what you're shooting for, huh? Um, yeah, I think we'll get a lot more, but that is a very low minimum. Okay. <laughs> I'm hoping, actually, yeah, honestly, sure. most of them should be done in July, but again. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, when we first started talking to you back in February, I mean, I, I hope that REI has helped you to, to make baby steps anyway. I'm sure that, um, you know, you're going to need a lot more funding, a lot more just probably time to, to get everything else done. Good start, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I think it's, and I've been liking the, um, the ideas that you've been sharing, too. I think that's been great. Well, and I, I really, I mean, I know that it's hard. You're thinking about what you're doing, but it's to kind of analyze what you're doing and then sharing that, like, how oh, we're doing this. It's, that's not an easy thing to do, but it's going to help, I think, for other communities because they can use the same model and plug in anything they want. You know, they can mm -hmm. do something different and, and say they're going to do it according to your model, though. And I think September, it'll be actually much easier to reflect since right now I'm, I mean, i got to go back and finish reviewing mm -hmm. a video. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really in the thick of it right now. So it's like September will be much easier to be able to reflect and go yeah. talk about the whole process. Um, yeah, you'll be, you'll be ready. For yes. The, for the yeah. shooting summit. Yeah. Okay, well, I will let you go. It's 3 o'clock, and um, thank you so much. This was really good. It's been recorded, so we'll, um, we have to transcribe it. Hopefully, we'll get it up, though, very soon. And, and then um, I guess the next time I'll talk to you is probably just before the summit. If you have any questions about what to bring or, you know, I think on the agenda for the summit, you might be one of the first presenters. which was I am. I know. It was an oops on our part. But maybe it's a blessing disguise because then you can stay over and feel refreshed the next day instead of driving. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. don't want to be the last one either. But we didn't right. even ask you. We, we just I, I looked back and I'm like, oh no, she's gonna be first. Oh, that's fine. Okay. All right. Well, good. I'm I'm looking forward to this. I think it's gonna be really good. But thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. So we'll we'll uh, talk soon. Okay. All right. Bye. Have a good holiday. Fourth of July. Okay. Thanks. You too. All right. Bye. Bye.